Okay, in this video I just want to discuss a problem involving um, protein purification and something you might see on an exam or something like that and might ask you to understand some of the concepts of protein purification. So the problem says a solution contains the following four dipeptides arginine arginine, aspartic acid valine, alanine phenylalanine, and glycine histidine. Give the order in which these four pe peptides will loot from an anion exchange column at pH 6. So, let's just write down what we know. We know that we're at a pH equal to 6. And the next thing I would do, if I were doing this, would, uh, I would recognize that we have an anion exchange column. So what does that mean? It means that the anion exchange column is going to bind negatively charged species. So, this binds negative species. So, with that said, the anions are going to be most attracted to it then. Now that we know that it binds negative species most, most or tightest, then we want to write down each of the dipeptides. I would do it just like this. Arginine, arginine, and then I would do aspartic acid, valine, alanine, phenylalanine, and the last one being glycine, histidine. So once I have the four written down, I want to say what is the charge at pH 6? So pH 6, we know that the backbone is going to have the same charge, that is the backbone group so we know that the NH3 is going to be plus and we know that the CH here which is the alpha carbon and we know that this is going to have a negative charge so if we have a plus one and a minus one that just equals zero but we have to also take into account some of these side chains have um, you know have are either basic or acidic and actually have charges so in the case of such like arginine here at pH 6, we know that it doesn't lose a proton until about pH of 12. So it's going to have a plus 1 and a plus 1. So overall this dipeptide is going to have a plus 2 charge. Now aspartic acid and valine, aspartic acid has a minus 1 charge because it loses a proton at 3.9. And valine has no charge, so this overall charge is minus 1. Alanine, phenylalanine, they are both nonpolar hydrophobic amino acids, so they're going to have a charge of zero overall. Both of them are zero. And glycine and histidine is kind of an interesting one here because the glycine doesn't really make a difference, such as zero. But histidine at pH of six, if you recall, it actually loses a proton at pH six. So that means that half of it's going to be protonated, half of it's going to be deprotonated. And what that translates into for our purposes is that a plus one half charge for our purposes. So the next thing I would do is I would just say something like this. I would say first and last. And the first thing I would look at is I would go back to what I know to begin with. It binds negative species tightest. So I'd look to see if any of these have negative charge. And we only have one with a negative charge, and this is aspartic acid valine. So we already know automatically that that's the last one to a loop. Because remember, it's an anion exchange column. It's binding negatively charged species tightest. Negatively charged species, only one that's negatively charged, it's going to be the tightest. The next thing to recognize is that if it's binding negatively charged species tightly, whatever that group is on the column, it's going to be positively charged. And we'll notice here that arginine is positively charged, and this arginine-arginine dipeptide has a plus two overall charge. And if we remember from physics or whatever, uh, like charges repel. So this is actually going to move through the column really fast. And that's how you're going to wind up with your first group to elute. Um, now, if we're just going to go in order for the rest of these, we can see that glycine histidine plus one half. It has a positive charge. We just said positive charges repel. So the next group here, glycine, histidine. 
And alanine and phenylalanine both have zero charge. They're hydrophobic, so they're going to be right here. And that's it. That's pretty much the whole problem. So first, arginine, arginine, glycine, histidine, second, third, alanine, phenylalanine, and fourth, aspartic acid, and valine. And that's, you're done with the first problem. This is kind of like a part two to this problem, and it says, which dipeptide would elute last from a hydrophobic column? So remember, the more hydrophobic the dipeptide, the greater the interaction with the column, because that's what this is saying. It's saying we have a hydrophobic column, and if we have a hydrophobic phobic group, it's going to interact it's going to interact more essentially so hydrophobic group is going to interact more and what that translates to is that it's essentially just going to bind tighter and elute slower through the column it's going to take more time to get through because it's going to because it's going to be bound to the column so if we just look to see back at those first couple of peptides that we have up here, which ones are hydrophobic? And we notice that we actually have two very hydrophobic amino acids right there. Alanine, if you recall, has a CH3 on its side chain, and phenylalanine has a CH2 and a benzene ring. So something like that. Both of those are very hydrophobic. So all you have to do here to get this answer correct is know that a hydrophobic column binds hydrophobic groups more tightly. And then just examine which groups you have up there that are actually hydrophobic. So the answer to this one, the dipeptide that elutes last, is alanine, phenylalanine. And that's pretty much all it takes. So hopefully this helps.